Mr. Berquist. Oh, here. Mr. Kozer. Here. Mr. Lewis. Here. All right. Did you want us to pledge allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, first item is approval of the minutes from the regular council meeting held on August 23rd. So moved. Second. Discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, special reports. There are none. Body has comments on any non agenda items? Okay. okay. Un unfinished business? There is none. New business. Ordinance amending Peters Township Code of Ordinances, Chapter 304, titled Peddlers, Canvassers, and Transient Merchants, by establishing a do not knock list. So, as Council is well aware, um, uh, there have been concerns in the community with regard to door-to-door uh, -door solicitation, and, and many people would have a preference for that not to occur at their home. Um, right now, the way that you can, can prohibit that is to place a sign that's visible uh, from the street, and that's to be honored by uh, the door-to-door uh, -door salesman. What we would like to be able to do is to offer another alternative, and that would be to be able to register your home so that, in fact, door-to-door uh, -door solicitors will not, will not uh, come to your home. And, and the way that would work is that people would be given an opportunity online or by paper uh, to register their home. Um, we're proposing that that listing would last for five years or until a home sells. And that list, list would then be provided to the door-to-door um, uh, -door salesman when they get their permit. Uh, if they, in fact, uh, go to a home that's on that list, they would risk uh, having their permit revoked, having the company's permit revoked, and being subject to a fine. So. And so once you register, you'd be on permanently. It's not like the do not call list where you have to re-register every so many years. No, well, you, there would have to be a period of time where you would have to re-register because, um, uh, and, and what we're going to probably do inside of regulation is um, to make that for a five-year period. Most other communities actually have people doing this on an annual basis. I, I personally think that's, that's a lot to ask of residents to, to know to do that. So. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve ordinance number 868, amending the Peters Township Code of Ordinances, Chapter 304, titled Peddlers, Canvassers, and Transient Merchants by establishing a do not knock list. Sorry. Discussion? I yes, do please. have two questions. Go ahead, Mr. Lewis. Well, I didn't mean to intercede, but go ahead. when we talked about this in prior events, we always got around to things like the Girl Scouts and... Uh, elementary school kids selling uh, chocolates and things of that nature. You know, where do they fit? Or it, and that, uh, in terms of the ordinance, uh, none of that changes because as I, they don't maybe the chief's gonna, they don't, get a, they, they they get, a don't get a permit. Correct. Yeah. So they're not permitted that they don't fall into Good this. luck having Girl Scouts show up at your door anymore. No, they don't want it, they don't want it done by uh, yeah. email, yeah. internet. Well, that's actually the Girl Scouts, the national organization that wants yeah, it that way. Okay. That was where I was headed. I wonder when anybody else is listening. Thank you for that question. I wondered, is this for individuals only, or is it feasible that if a plan had an HOA, the HOA could say, do not come in? I... I so well, I don't think that that would be possible. I think the way it's written um, right now, it's just for individuals. So how would we propose to have residents do this? Will it be online, for example, through the township website? And for people who can't, will there be a form? Yes, there'll be both. So it'll, multiple be able to, ways to do be, that. You could do it online, or there'll be a form that you could fill out and, and get back to us. And, and just so everybody knows, there are ex exceptions to that people uh, canvassing po po politicians like yourselves and um, religious groups. The courts have said you yeah. can't do a do not knock list for those individuals. Mm -hmm. First Amendment issues mm -hmm. take precedence. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, motion and a second in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. 
the authorization permitting Peters Township Police Chief to file a permit application to the Pennsylvania Game Commission uh, for deer culling program. And we are going to get the chief to come up to the microphone for this one. Um, but what, what uh, tonight, uh, we are not seeking authorization to implement a program. What we're seeking is authorization to make the application to the Game Commission so that if council decides it wants to go ahead with this program, we in fact can do it next year. There are budget implications to this because there's a cost to, to this program. Um, and the other thing is I think there's going to be interest inside the community and it may well make sense to have a public hearing on this subject uh, prior to doing it. But the chief's probably in a better position than, than myself to answer any questions you might have about what a sharpshooter program looks like. Oh. <coughs> okay, chief, you're on. You want me to just explain? Just yeah. Yeah, tell us what the differences are then. So uh, currently we have the archery program. The archery program has been pretty steady from inception um, in, as to its impact to the deer population. Uh, from the last five years when I pulled the statistics of car crashes, they averaged between 73 and 91 or 93 uh, deer car collisions. Now those are generally reported as uh, reportable crashes as opposed to non-reportable where there's a lower uh, threshold to the damage to the car or injury of a person. But that's where that number has been staying consistent, 73 to 93 in that range. We have had as many as 50 archers in the program. We found that to not be very effective and we've cut that number back uh, to 30. And that has a lot to do with the areas that we have to hunt and the effectiveness of those hunters. What we see from year to year is our archers are predominantly only taking one or two deer as part of this program as opposed to, and we have a couple who, who veer off the scale there and get eight, nine, or ten. Um, but for the archery program to be successful, they need to take many more deer than that to limit that population and reduce the number of car deer collisions. And that doesn't even go into the property damage that the deer cause and we get routine calls on in regards to that as well because the deer population is significant. This time of year the, the fawns are, are eating just about everything they can find. And so this is the next step in that process through the Game Commission. The next level is the sharpshooter program. You've heard about it I'm sure in Mount Lebanon where it's being used and used very effectively there. They have very, very small parcels of ground to be able to operate this program within and as a result, um, you know, they're limited as to what they can do. But the sharpshooter program has taken significant numbers of deer up there, reduced their population, limited some of the damages in regards to car deer collisions and property damage that they cause. We're looking to take that next step, file that application with the Game Commission to see if in fact we qualify for it because we have to get that in and within a certain period of time. The, the opportunity to shoot deer in this program exists between like the end of January, early February to about mid-March. And if we don't file the applications now to at least be considered for that process, we'll miss that deadline. We'll be talking about this again next year. Um, as far as where this would occur, we would start um, with township properties um, and then move out as uh, opportunity exists with private ground. Uh, there are a number of areas that we think private ground would be re uh, receptive and a, and a good location for this particular program. The way that it works is that there's a, a bait uh, that's put down that draws the deer from miles around. <laughs> uh, theoretically, but the deer come from all around and then you go in and you just start shooting the deer. It's a very controlled manner. Uh, the people are expert uh, marksmen who do this. They only take the shot when it's safe to do so and they can harvest the deer. The deer is harvested, uh, cleaned out, and taken to a processor and the, the meat goes to uh, one of the <clears throat> special projects for the hunger. So sharpshooters aren't necessarily police officers. They're just well, qualified individuals. That know that no, sir. Qualified. No, that, well, in this case here, and what I'm proposing, we're fortunate um, here to have two people who are sharpshooters in a deer management program. In fact, their business runs the program or is the program in Mount Lebanon. 
Mount Lebanon pays a heck of a lot more than we would pay <laughs> because they're working for us. I'm proposing that they do this while on duty when staffing is sufficient to allow them this opportunity, but they do this on duty, shoot the deer, harvest the deer, and get them out. Well, so they would be the only two? They would be the only two. And the cost of the township would be minimal. My projections at this point are a little less than ten thousand dollars. It's a heck of a lot more than that in Mount Lebanon. Now, is there any limit under that program? How many you can take? It's just as many as you can get. Yeah, I, I would expect they would kill somewhere in the area of about a hundred deer um, in that program. What kind of bait do you use? I have a plant at my house. They seem to like. Yeah. They got a whole backyard. I have a lot several of mine. Full disclosure: I'm a bow hunter. Yeah. I guess the first thing I see talking with guys that are in the program is I think it's mismanaged, to be honest with you. You got guys taking one, two deer. Yep. I personally, I would put in some kind of quota system where a guy can't meet the quota, he's out of the program, that you're bringing another one. I can tell you, I'm not going to do it publicly, but I, I know that there's a property bordering a township parcel that the property manager made a deal with the guys that are in there, telling them if they don't shoot the does, they can hunt on the next property over. So I know you got guys in there that aren't killing deer. Oh, um, I know that. And we've kicked those out. That's why I said we went from 50 down to 30 because of that. Yeah. Can you find people? No. It, it's, it's, it's a very difficult um, proposition to, to sell. They get paid nothing. It takes a significant amount of time to kill and harvest the deer. You're using uh, their arrows, their broadheads, which are quite expensive. You're an archery right. hunter. <laughs> um, and, and it's a lot of work. Yeah, but guys want to be in that program, though. I, I think if you open it up to 20, 30 more guys, you'll probably get 100 guys come out here. We, I mean, we've not seen applications for additional guys except maybe one or two I a year. The, from what I understand, the word on the street is it's completely closed out. That's so not I, correct. Okay. I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen any postings. Do you restrict it to residents? Uh, no, we have not historically. You said $10,000. Mr. Lauer's quoting 21000 That's the number in your memo. Well, I think we're counting um, salaries in that twenty-one thousand. That the cost of feed and processing the deer is closer to ten. Well, and also you have to think about how many deer starve during the winter. Oh, yes. You know, there's a certain humane element to this too. Uh, the old. Starve, right? They're pretty big around here. I don't see any deer. Ah, I don't know, Gary. I see plenty of skinny ones in the winter time. Well, here's the deal. We have decimated their natural habitat with the construction that's going on. Full disclosure, they're in my backyard all the time because all of the properties around there have had all of the woods removed. So we're, we're, I'm not sure there's more deer personally. I don't count them. But I think they're condensed into areas and now the re their residential areas where they used, used to be their habitat. So surprise, surprise. Yeah. That, I mean, they're a creature of habit. They know where they're supposed to be. But then their habitat's gone. I'm, I'm not in favor of the program, frankly. I think that um, I agree with Mr. Stiebel that, you know, maybe trying to solicit more archers to get people out there and get that ramped up a little bit better, if that's what you want to do. Well, the problem with more archers is having more space to put those archers. That's the problem. Do they archery hunt on We're, private property now? They do. They do. And we have to have an agreement with the private property owner for that to take place. How do they know that that service, so to speak, is, is available? And how the do they private property take, owners? Yes. Um, the guys that run the archery program, if they find or catch wind of somebody who has a piece of property where they're willing to meet with us, we'll go and meet with them and work out an agreement on that. Well, I mean, I would think we, we should be more pro, if we were more proactive, we probably would have more more properties, and, and if, we, if we were more proactive in recruitment, we'd have more archers. And I, I, I'm not a big supporter of, of using firearms and, and opening that whole can of worms that was opened in my Lebanon. I mean, I think that if, if we put the time in and the effort, uh, we can address the, these issues um, through the existing archery program. Do you know what the status is of, um, the, I remember reading when Mount Lebanon was doing it, a, a deer birth control, some method where they could put feed out that I, I would don't make know. them. I don't know. No, that's, 
I mean, the problem is, I mean, you're never going to kill as many deer with archery as you are with a gun. It's just not going to happen. I mean, I agree with Miss. I agree with Mrs. Merrill that you know, there's no question that we've taken their habitat. But at the same time, I mean, back before, you know, Peter's Township was as built up, they weren't feasting on $500 arborvitae or whatever. You know, I mean, they're, they've developed a gourmet appetite, quite honestly. And I, you know, I don't know. They're eating the weeds back there. Your property is an old, correct? Yeah. As of when last year? Yeah. Why did it take so long? No one asked me. There you go. So. I don't know how many you guys took off of ours last year. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know. I think know. it was around eight or, I think it was around eight oh, or ten or. I'll make a motion that we allow the police chief to file a permit application with the Pennsylvania Game Commission for a sharp shooting deer calling program. No second. Is there discussion? Yeah, I do have another question. What is the armament that the sharpshooters use? They would probably use the 223 round. So that's what we have. That's what they use in Mount Lebanon, 223 round. What's that mean? Um, it's a 22 caliber round. But it's a high powered round. 223 is yes. what you're saying. 223. Okay. That's the caliber. Yes. It's an AR 15, basically. Yeah, it's an AR 15 round. They wouldn't use an AR 15, but yes. Same round. Okay. Any other questions? All right. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. 4 3. 4 3. Thank you. Long we meet next time. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Next item, approval of Cushy Lot Consolidation Plan Number 1 is shown on drawings prepared by Keystone Survey and Mapping Company dated July 22 for Allen Cushy. So all we're doing here is taking two lots and making one? Making one. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve for recording purposes the Cushy Lot Consolidation Plan is shown on drawings prepared by Keystone Surveying and Mapping dated July 22, 2021. Second. Discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The uh, approval of the uh, Ferrero <coughs> Riddle subdivision plan number one is shown on drawings prepared by Keystone Surveying and Mapping dated August 27 for <coughs> Nicholas Ferrero and Ashley Riddle. So what you see on the screen uh, is the uh, current configuration and the post configuration. What is somewhat unique about this subdivision is that the flag lot only has uh, 32 feet of um, of frontage at the uh, building line, uh, the the ordinance requires that it have 50. Um, this doesn't, in, in, from our opinion, doesn't increase the non-conformity. It lengthens the the uh, drive that's associated with that flag lot. Uh, it simply reconfigures the uh, three parcels in the way that that is shown there. Paul, what's the topography on this? Do we realistically think they're going to be able to get a driveway? into that third lot because I mean that's how long is that maybe I missed it but what's hey. the rationale for this they, they, they want to link the property recently there. sold um, and they want to reconfigure it and add more land to their existing parcels and reconfigure the vacant parcel. Which so they own both right now? Two okay. people own all, all three. Okay. Yeah. So one person owns two and one person owns three. Yes, the green lot is owned by one person. The gold and blue lots are owned by another. And the houses right now are on the green and gold parcels, yes. right? Correct. <clears throat> so how, did the fifth, how did that get passed? If we had a 50-foot requirement, because it's pre-existing, it's pre-existing. It, that um, was pre prior to the yes. ordinance. Yes. So, if we approve this, by default, are we approving the fact that there's a 32-foot frontage, or is he going to have to subdivide again to take property off of the other one to make the 50 feet? No. No, that lot right now, as it's, it's, as it's configured, is a buildable lot because it's existing and non-conforming, but that still means it's a lot that can be developed. How long did you say that was, Ed? That Eight, 800 feet, approximately. So they have to go 800 feet off of Thompsonville before they can get back to the building site. Correct. And, and Thompsonville has a lot of these types of lots. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to remember where this is. I'm just envisioning. Yeah, so. I'm not picturing it's on the <coughs> opposite side of... Thompsonville from Elm Grove Park. 
Well, that, that topography over there is pretty hilly. How in the world are they going to get a three, an 800 foot driveway there without having to salamander back and forth? But then again, I guess that's not our problem. I guess so. I'm not sure that's our concern. <laughs> yeah, right. Our, our I mean, if it can, the question is whether the lot is legal. Right. And I, I mean, think the, it is. the question is: Is that an increase in the nonconformity? And I guess you can look at it both ways, because right now you have a nonconformity that only goes back what about 300 feet? Yeah. Now the you're going to nonconformity is the 32 feet, isn't it? Right. right. Well, right. But the question is: You're extending the. You're essentially extending the nonconformity, though, because well, you're, you're taking it back. Is at the street. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it stays 32 feet all the way back to the. It doesn't make any difference. So please clarify for me my question: Will they still have to go for a variance no. to build no. on that lot for the width of the frontage? No, but in fact, the one the one restriction that's going to be on the plan is that because these the the gold lot and the blue lot are still in the same ownership, um, if in fact um, uh, the owner of both of these lots wants to build something on on the flag lot they can't it has to there's, so. there's a there's a provision in the ordinance that doesn't allow you to develop on a uh, non-conforming lot if in fact you own the one next to it so they the only way that property it. gets a house on it is they sell it because he personally could fix the problem yes and so where if he doesn't fix it he has to sell the property and then whoever went, gets it can yes. build with a non-conformity right. lot. And where, where, is the, where are the utilities? The utilities are all in Thompsonville. So they're going to have to get their sewers, their all their utilities, and a driveway up through there. It would be a very difficult lot. To all right. Yeah. No, I mean, you're right. I mean, it, it complies. So, I mean, I guess. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve for recording purposes the Ferraro Riddle subdivision plan number one as shown on drawings prepared by Keystone Surveying and Mapping Inc. dated August 27, 2021, for Nicholas Ferraro and Ashley Riddle, subject to the conditions in Mr. Coon's memo. I'll second. <coughs> Other discussion? In I don't favor? like it. <laughs> I don't like it either, Mr. Merrill. Nobody Merrill. likes it, but it's a, in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. I'm going to abstain. I represent one of the parties. Okay. 6 0. And an abstention. Uh, approval of the Rose Caputo lot line adjustment plan number one, shown on drawings presented by Keystone Surveying and Mapping, dated August 26th. Charles and Kelly Caputo and Matthew Rose. Um, so what this is, is uh, the piece of property that's shown here in red is being transferred from the property owner on the left-hand side of this to the property owner on the, on the right-hand side. So it's a simple lot line shift. Move we approve for recording purposes the Ross Caputo line adjustment plan number one is shown on drawings prepared by Keystone Surveying and Mapping dated August 26, 2021 for Charles and Kelly Caputo and Matthew W. Ross subject to the conditions in Mr. Zook's memo. Second. Other discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The approval of the Wolf subdivision plan number one is shown on drawings prepared by Keystone Surveying and Mapping dated June 21 for Matthew T. and Courtney M. Waltz. So this is a uh, subdivision to actually bring um, a uh, flag lot uh, into conformance with the uh, Township Ordinance. If you look at the top of uh, the um, uh, picture, the current configuration has a very narrow uh, point that touches the street. What this does is increase the uh, width to 50 feet um, at the building line and then create a, a, a flag lock behind the conforms or ordinance. Mr. Lauer, is there a building on the gold piece of property? Yes. So when the line is moved, will the side setbacks it still be met. All in compliance. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve for recording purposes. The Wolf subdivision plan number one is shown on drawings by Keystone Survey and Mapping, dated June 21 for Matthew T. and Courtney M. Wolves. I'll second. Other discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Alrighty. Change, uh, change order to the construction contract for Abel Roney, Rolling Hills uh, 
transportation improvement project. So this is the uh, contract that, that uh, related to the construction of Rolling Hills Drive, the uh, second contract. Um, if you recall, uh, we had come to you in 2020 and indicated that there was a discrepancy in the number in the units that was associated with one of the items, um, and that that would result in a significant uh, change order. Um, I guess the point I would make is that this is a unit price contract, um, and um, so therefore, what you're paying for that additional uh, unit. Uh, would have been what it would, uh, would have been had we in fact been uh, correct at the time when the when the bid documents were prepared. Uh, the other thing is kind of interesting note the note is that that discrepancy was uh, resulted in a change of two hundred six thousand nine hundred forty dollars. The net increase in the contract is two hundred and forty dollars, and I think the thing that you can take from that is that the remaining units. And estimates for the contract were were um, pretty much spot on, um, but that does leave us with the responsibility to uh, approve a change order uh, uh, for the construction contract with Ace of the remedy the amount of two hundred thousand one hundred forty dollars and seventy seven cents. Who who made the computational error during the development of the bidding document? Was uh, that us? No, it would have been. Who was it? It would have been the engineer. HRG. HRG. So they, they have errors and emissions, don't they? They should be paying this. That's no, we go for that. We have, but they I don't think that's how that works in a unit price yeah, contract. Because they can't multiply? Isn't that costing us more money because they made a mistake? Or they're saying that that's what it would have been anyway? That's what it would have been, been anyway. <laughs> In this contract, how many different items were there that had units? 125, 125 items had units. And so it's one one of those items, they have grossly missed the units. Well, grossly is the bad, the word that's concerning to, to console because, as you said, it's $200,000 more. Mm -hmm. This is not shared with the school district. Yeah. Although this project is shared with the school district. Mm -hmm. So if they have to approve it or we just approve it? No, no, this is our pay. contract. Okay. They, they pay for half of the cost. So well, works. I agree with Mr. Curie's question, but I have another question also. This is a final payment. Mm -hmm. yes. There are some things listed on this summary that are percentage complete, not 100. So are those things that are technically still done? Or will we have another Well, payment? like Paul said, it's a unit price contract, so some, some items never got to 100%. You know, okay, well, that was part of the question. Yeah, so yeah. we had some things that were under Correct. what they estimated, some things that are over. Yes. Correct. And this does not involve the Umbel intersection down on McMurray Road. Yeah. Which the same product. Yeah. But... Yeah. but the change the quantities of rock here have nothing to do with it. Well, indirectly they do because they were the rock was put in as a base to form the embankment to take East McMurray Road off of alignment. So indirectly they do. I mean, the whole project's tied together. So we're on the hook for one hundred thousand seventy dollars and thirty six cents, right? But from the time we bid it, we didn't have that intersection finalized. And we've always anticipated that there would be an adjustment for the bird road Not intersection. Your question. Well, when we originally went out for bid, we didn't have the intersection approved. Um, oh, no. Um, those, those two uh, things happened simultaneously. But the, the, yeah. this, this design did not change. This is a miss in, in the calculations of a quantity. So this has nothing to do with the fact it had to have modifications because of Washington County? No, and no. this did not. No. All right, so that's... No, that, yeah, well, that that not, I was thinking that it had. No, no this, I, I guess it was not a result of something that PennDOT added, like at the 11th hour, if that's your question. 
this was something that was in the design that what Paul said was just simply a miss in their calculations. And, you know. <coughs> okay, anything else? Accept the motion. I'll make a motion that we adopt, approve change order number two to the construction contract with A. Liberoni, Inc. for the Rolling Hills Transportation Improvements Project in the amount of $200,140.77. I'll second. Other discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, resolution amending Peter's Township Personnel Manual by creating a job description for a racket sports manager. So uh, as uh, council has directed, um, we are moving forward with, um, with opening up the uh, tennis center uh, for the uh, winter play. One of the things uh, towards that end, um, uh, we are um, out right now looking for a racket sports manager. Um, in your docket is a uh, job description for that position. Um, Beyond the change in the title, um, the other, one of the other changes is to move this position from non-exempt uh, to exempt, which means it's no longer an hourly position, but rather a salary position, and the pay grade is to remain the same. So the position has been posted already, mm -hmm. but we haven't approved the job description. That's correct because we're trying to get this position filled so that in fact there is somebody here when that tennis bubble goes up, because every day that we go without someone managing that up there is creating a problem. So, so you're absolutely correct. I, we would not normally do that, but in this particular case, I thought it was prudent that we move forward. Well, we had a large discussion at our workshop about this whole thing, and so I had a few questions because the job description has some specific things in there. You do reference the bubble, which exists now, we have in the past talked about the rocket program moving to Rolling Hills. And you also reference maintenance this person is supposed to do. Can you talk a little bit about what that involves? It's, uh, for the most part, it's court maintenance. So like if you look at here, what you're seeing is a picture of those clay courts. Those clay courts need to be maintained on a daily basis. So they needed to be dragged and things like that. When the tennis bubble goes up, the, uh, the, um, the the courts have to be irrigated, and uh, in addition to that, someone has to monitor the HVAC system to so make I, sure that the pressure in the, the bubble stays at, at a level that is appropriate. So are you expecting the person to find contractors or to do this work? That kind of work is something that the, is done at the tennis center by the tennis center employees. Okay, um, I also had a question in the past, the person who was managing this gave lessons. What, mm -hmm. There's not really any reference in the job description to that. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, the, the person who would be the manager of the center would be allowed to um, offer lessons, uh, private lessons on their own. Um, the basis of which that's going to be compensated is, um, is up for discussion when we, we find the person uh, uh, who, who will be the manager. It's also going to be, quite frankly, dependent upon a, a um, workers' comp case that's currently being had, hearings so, which are currently being held, which is attempting to de determine the status of our pros. Um, do you require an education certificate for this program? For the, this what's re wait, what the job description talks about is um, um, a uh, college degree or related experience. Like well, Park and Rec administration are related field. Yes. Or and the reason. Of relevant experience. Right. right. So you, you might get a tennis pro in who doesn't necessarily have a degree. But you might, but we all agreed prior to this that management of that is the primary thing they have to do. Well, it did is. that change in the conversation you had? No, I think that is the primary function of the position. Um, uh, but it's not the only function because I think teaching is part of that and they need to be involved in the JD program as well as if we're to attract somebody, they're going to also have, be, have to be given the opportunity um, to earn additional money by private lessons.
Folks, if we don't find anybody right away, what are we going to do? Well, we, we need to find someone right away, and we're working hard towards that. We've yeah. got the, uh, Kelly Cunningham from the USTA who's helping us um, attempt to locate a, an appropriate candidate. So. Other comments? Accept the motion. I'll make a motion to approve the proposed job description for a racket sports manager position that reclassifies it from non-exempt to exempt and leaves it at the same grade. Second. The discussion in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Authorization to seek proposal for refinancing of a series of 2013 general obligation bonds using a negotiated sale. So one of the things that's in, in your docket is a report from uh, Danny Montgomery Scott. Um, interest rates are such that there's an opportunity for saving with the refinancing of the uh, 2013 bond. That savings is estimated to be uh, approximately uh, $200,000. Normally, there, there are two ways that you can uh, uh, float municipal bonds. One is through a competitive sale, one through a negotiated sale. And normally on new issues, our issues have all been competitive sales. Uh, when we do refinancing, um, we have used a negotiated sale process. And the reason why is that you're, you're hunting for a target. So in our case, what I'm suggesting is we should establish a target of two and a half percent. The Government Finance Officers Association uh, always, uh, as a rule of thumb, recommends that you get at least 2% savings on the outstanding uh, debt service. So um, I think uh, based upon what Jenny Montgomery Scott has done up to this point, 2.5 certainly seems feasible. It may well be that you can get a savings as much as 3%. And the way we have done this in the past, and what I have suggested is that um, we take that savings up front as opposed to uh, over the life of the issue. And they would do the negotiation? Well, what you, the next item on the agenda is to appoint a, a municipal advisor. So um, Jenny Montgomery Scott has served as the municipal advisor on our last uh, two bond issues. They're proposing to do that for the same fee that they did um, in 2019. Uh, and quite frankly, I think they serve the township well. So what, Jenny, if you would appoint them as municipal advisor, they would be responsible for soliciting proposals for bond counsel, paying agent, and underwriter um, for those issues. And they would have, and then they would also assume responsibility for uh, working with uh, Ryan in completing the official statement. So, what does the cost of that? Is that that's net? That this this number here is net of their cost. That's net of everyone's cost. That's net of of it, the cost of issuance. I'll move that we authorize the appropriate township officials to execute a municipal bond advisor service agreement with Janie Montgomery Scott. Do we need to do that other? Hold on a minute. Yeah, we we'll, have to do we the other thing. Well, I think you, you need to do both. I think you know, oh, I'm sorry, sorry God. Doing. I mean, that doesn't matter. I'll send it to you. Yeah. So we just did G and H, or the two of them together? You can do that, too. Okay. So the only do? question I I'll, I'll move for both. Authorization to enter a contract with Jane Montgomery Scott to serve as, as independent municipal advisor for refinancing of the 213 uh, two, 2013 general obligation bonds. I'll, I'll still I got a question. question. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mrs. Merrill. The only thank you. The only question I had. We have talked about needing to go for a bond issue potentially at the end of the year. Do we have any risk if we go and try to refinance this prior to that? Actually, the reason why my preference is to do this now is one. It's not clear when we're going to go out for that second bond issue. If we do that, if we do this bond issue this year it will again be callable in five years if we combine it with the with the other bond issue and it's more than 10 10 million dollars the it won't be it will, it will, it will never be callable again because it'll be eight years before that issue will be callable so thanks for clarifying 
Now, do we still get final choice then on who bond, bond council is and the paying agent and yes. all that? So they're just going to... They're going to go out and shop it. We, and uh, us we have a list of people we've used before, right. and they're going to probably go back to them and get pricing. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all I got. Okay. So we... Uh, we got two motions, or one motion for items I and J. We combined them. Okay. All right. Uh, moves. Uh, seconded. Yep. Gary seconded. Okay. Yeah. Gary. Oh, okay. Um, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Can I abstain? Okay. Abstain. Um, change order uh, to the design contract for uh, with uh, Kimmel uh, Bogret uh, to alter the design of the Rolling Hills Aquatic Center. Um, so, um, in, in the uh, last week, we had an open house for uh, eight hours where uh, lots of people had a, come in, a chance to come in and speak to us about uh, the project as well as the complete surveys. Then in addition to that, all that information was was uh, online and, and people had the ability to complete the survey as well. I don't know whether council wants to, I afford everybody a copy of the survey results. I don't know whether council wants to go through that. Uh, uh, tonight as well um, that's up to you but um, I you know I think when when I look at the survey results I, I what I see is what we we have seen before is that uh, there is a majority of people uh, in Peters Township who would like us to go ahead with this project based upon that survey um, the other thing that I think um, uh, is also clear is that the vast majority of people want to see this project in terms of its operating cost uh, to uh, pay for itself. Um, when people answered that question, were they aware that none of our other facilities? Actually, the question uh, was prefaced with that, that, that in fact, um, uh, all other. And, and the, the thing that's interesting about that is, because uh, uh, one of the things, I've actually read all 650 uh, responses. And the thing that's interesting about that is that that doesn't change, that this concept of this pain for itself doesn't change whether you're in favor of the pool or, or opposed to the pool. I, I think there's a universal expectation that, that the, uh, the pool cover its operating costs, which I think has implications for you know, setting fees and, and uh, if in fact, Council decides to go ahead with this. It may be that the fees are, are higher than what uh, was in the uh, Ballard King uh, report. That would seem like it would be logical because their estimations mm -hmm. were several months ago, and now the current environment for hiring people and paying people has changed. And they proposed 950. Yeah, for lifeguard you, fees, which is not you, you won't in the do ballpark. that. And the other thing that Beller King's um, report doesn't include is whatever the cost, the back office cost of actually managing this. And um, I'm more and more convinced that if we want to do this successfully, we're, we're going to have to employ the services of a third party to actually manage the facility, and those fees would have to be incorporated into. But just so that we're clear, it's 62. 0.1% were in favor by the survey, mm -hmm. which is pretty consistent with what our yeah, we, prior survey. Yeah, we, yeah, we, you know, one of the, our, we, we've served the, the community a lot with regard to pools over the years. The one with, with regard to this aquatic center that uh, we initially did was with campus market research. Their numbers just slightly higher than that number. Right. So. so does that mean that it's the same people answering the questions? Probably. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem with these, these surveys is that people that are for really for something are really yeah. opposed. Those are the ones that respond. Well, no, and, well, and, and that I will agree with you with regard to this technique, but with regard to what Campos did was it was random selection right. based upon tax um, uh -huh. uh, ownership. And, and so that survey was a bit more random than this was. This is, I would agree with you. I, I think the problem with this kind of survey technique is if I'm very much in favor of what I'm responding, if I'm very much opposed to what I'm responding, I think all the people in the middle, I don't know that you hear from them. Well, and the thing about the Campos survey that everyone has to remember 
is the qualifier that they stated, that when people are presented with an opportunity and they vote yes, and then they vote, you know, are you more likely, absolutely, possibly, you know, every time you look at what the number is, they told us that in actuality, when the rubber hits the road and someone is presented with the opportunity, the follow through's not there, so the percentage is different. Don't forget that part of their survey that they said, because they basically say that people will answer yes, but when presented with potentially a fee that's twice what they think, they may not do it. So, you know, I, I, I think it was, it, first of all, people were very grateful they had an opportunity. I think, you know, um, 643 people out of the total population. Uh, I still wish there were more who saw it and responded, but um, no. So one I, of the things that, that in the survey results as I reported them, when I was going through them, what became clear to me is that if, that if you voted that the aquatic center, um, um, you didn't want the aquatic center, it, what you could then attach that to is if you looked at any feature for the aquatic center, you voted no as well. Um, so just for the sake of being able to, to look at this, one of the things I did with that is to go back and tally uh, the, the response to each of the question and, and separate it into those who favor and those who, who opposed it. So I mean, this is a perfect example. Is the design of the aquatic center appropriate? If you looked at that first number, you would see that it, you would think that it's fairly close. But if you ask the people who favor it, the, 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 overwhelmingly they think the design is appropriate. If you ask people who oppose it, overwhelmingly they believe the design is inappropriate. And and you know that holds true um, uh, throughout. Um, I did think it was interesting, though, that, that when it comes to the question of whether you want a, a what's designed there was kind of a, uh, with the water park figure features or a traditional rectangular pool, um, the 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 water park kind of uh, features I think are actually uh, preferred, so by by either group, so. So then I, you know, I went through and, and, and tallied these for each of the splash pads, and and again, when you go through this, what you see is those who favor it, uh, each of these features, um, who favor the pool, favor each of these features. And I guess you know the question you have to ask yourself: if council is going ahead with it based upon a belief that the majority of community wants it, you know. It would seem to me you, you would be designing the pool around those who've indicated that in fact they, uh, want they intend to, uh, to to use the pool. Now, so you know what council has tonight on the agenda is um, consideration of whether or not to issue a change order to the contract with Kimball Brogett for the redesign of the pool. Um, and, uh, you know, we went, we sat down with council and went through, uh, you know, this list that they had. These are the changes to the pool that have been proposed and, um, and in total they, they result in a, a savings of about $1,400,000 uh, and some thousand dollars. But again, we went through this once before, but I don't know whether council wants to go through each of these items and look at these or, or not, that's up to you. Well, there's some of them that have been recommended to be done and others not. I mean, we got this on Thursday. I, I think that perhaps, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure I, I agree 100% with the things, but um, I don't know. I don't know if everyone else has had enough time to digest them. I don't have any issues with anything you want to eliminate. I. I was never a big fan of the Lazy River, particularly in light of the fact that it wasn't very long. As I recall, you could get through it in less than a minute. Yeah, and actually, the Lazy River is, is the, and the size of the Lazy River is the size of the patio that sits outside of this building. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it takes less than a minute to go around it. And, 
and its cost is about four hundred to four hundred fifty thousand dollars. I don't think that's an amenity that makes sense to be included in. And the other thing, if you eliminate this, it gets it closer to the the target that I believe we ought to be shooting for is about two million dollars in savings over the, the original design. Well, and not only that, with the Lazy River, you always got rafts. People aren't taken out of the water, and they end up in the pool and all that other. So plus, plus, it's not an amenity that's going to attract. And I'm going to, you know, go over to Peter's Just swimming aquatic center because of the Lazy River. So, in the summary that you have in the docket, it's one point four, one million four hundred fifty-five thousand proposed, and then Kimball Bogret's contract would be added back in. Yes. So that number goes down. Yes. And what would the net result be? Well, their proposed fee is one hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars, and that's total. Yes. So you're at about one hundred one point three. And yes, and oh. then you would add four hundred to four hundred fifty thousand dollars for the Lazy River. So what would happen with the area where the Lazy River is now? Would that just be patio, or is that becoming part of the pool? Then? Well, I think what it's going to do is afford you an opportunity. You know, one of the big items of savings is to eliminate the retaining wall needed in that area. I think it's going to make it easier to do that. And then, um, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly how that that works out. Somebody else got to go back to this drawing. Yes. I was a little surprised. They, they're going to eliminate one of three picnic pavilions. Yes. And the only credit is $55,000. And I think that, quite frankly, I think that's low. Well, that's what I was going to yeah, say because yeah. we're paying three hundred thousand to <laughs> build them. Yeah. So I, I just wondered where that. I mean, are there more savings somewhere that but, they have? But, but that's if they're wrong, and I think they are, that will only mean that the, the construction contract will come in lower. And we're talking about adding the fourth lane, right? Yes. You know, I don't know that that really came out of the survey, but I'll tell you what, in the discussion with people, and, and the more I look at it, I'm, I'm convinced that that floor plane makes sense. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the square feet of water surface has to increase. It just needs to be reconfigured. Well, what I've heard from people about the lap planes is that in addition to adding them, which I'm adding one, which would be good, there's some concern because it's immediately adjacent to the rest of the large body of water. And that I and I don't lap swim, but apparently with kids playing and one thing and another, it's it creates a wake. Is that correct? I don't know if that's exactly what it's called. But but potentially, actually, in the beginning design, we had them segregated somehow, and we don't have that. So that was another feature people were interested in. And a lot of this involves modifications to the building itself. Yes. Have we heard anything yet about the grants we applied for? Uh, we have not. The um, Apparently, uh, the capital budget for the state of Pennsylvania is hung up in in uh, statewide politics, so until oh. we get that resolved, Surprise. imagine that totally unrelated to the capital budget. Wow! Surprise. There you go. But the good thing will be, um, before you're in a position to award this contract, you will have you will know whether or not there's additional funding coming from the state of Pennsylvania, uh, from the uh, federal government through the Land and Water Conservation Fund. In addition to that, we intend to apply for an LSA grant this yeah. fall. So we'll have an answer to all of those before council would actually award this contract. So perhaps it would be better if we waited to know more information about what other monies could potentially come in. I, I don't think so. The, the only reason I say that is that if, in fact, you know, one of the things that we ran into when we put this out the first time around that was actually a cost item was construction over the winter season. And um, I think if you want to put this out to bid uh, for uh, construction, you're going to want to take advantage of the entire construction season next year. And so if we wait, we, I don't know that we'll necessarily be able to do that. 
Yeah, I think you need to get the drawings done. Anything else to talk about on this? This is uh, to uh, issue a change order to the uh, architects for a uh, redesign. Motion? No motion. No, there will be a motion. <laughs> I move that we authorize. I'm trying to get there. Kimball Bogart and their associates, I guess, to proceed with a redesign to accommodate the adjustments and modifications that's being proposed in the representation of council here, which is the elimination of the Lazy River, the, lap, the four lanes in the lap pool, the elimination of one of the pavilions. And the items that are listed yeah. in your proposal. So. I'll second. Okay, any other discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. No. Nay. No. Four, three. Okay, authorization to pre qualify bidders for the Rolling Hills Aquatic Center. I'll make a motion that we authorize the township manager to establish a list of qualified bidders to serve as general contractor for the Rolling Hills Park Aquatic Center project. I'll second. Discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Four, three. Okay. And I'm assuming, given that we're doing up bid documents, that we can go out and solicit bids. Yes. Okay, item M. I'll make a motion that council authorize the township manager to seek bids for the construction of the Rolling Hills Aquatic Center. I'll second. The drawings are done. All right. A discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Four, three. All right. Payroll and bills. Well, Chairman, I have reviewed payroll and bills. Payroll is about 390000 with salaries and taxes and deferred comp. Accounts payable this time is about $2.2 million from approving some of the Liberoni changes. Um, it's what drove part of that up, plus utilities and other things. I move that we accept the um, payments as presented. Second. Discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Correspondence? There is none. Anybody want to talk about any of the minutes? Okay. Miscellaneous. Excuse me, may I make a statement Thank about you, that? I realize that the minutes aren't final until they're approved. But we're reading minutes from June. And to be honest with you, half of these things we've acted on. I'm wondering whether there could be an opportunity for council to see draft minutes so that we at least had some idea of things that were going on before, you know, it, we're voting on things that I'm reading about they're going to present to us because we're getting the minutes too late. It's just my opinion. I'm sure nobody else cares. <coughs> I don't see how you can get them any earlier. Well, they have draft minutes. They write their minutes at some point after the meeting. I know they have to go to the committee to be approved. But, but why can't they turn them around? Yeah, you're right, Monica. I mean, we turn ours as well. Well, Tom. see, the reason why some of these are as they are is that you have, have boards that did not meet in a given month. And no. so that's how you get that far back. Well, so let me do this. If a board is not intending on meeting, let me see whether I can get you the dra the, uh, the draft uh, minutes. Were they required to, to be at a public meeting to approve the minutes, or yep. can't they do that? Mm -hmm. They are. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we are, but yeah, they are too. So. <laughs> but let, let me see whether we can we can do that going forward. If in fact the board is not going to meet or does not have a quorum to meet. Let me see if I can get you the draft minutes on that basis. Or even a summary of the act, actions that they took. That would be something that would be. I, I understand what you're after. Let me see what I can do. Thank okay. you. That would be good. Miscellaneous. Um, one of the things we forwarded you was a report for Mr. Zomitis uh, concerning 
um, flooding related to the uh, storm, the uh, storm related to Hurricane Ida on the day before. And I thought maybe Mark might want to go over that quickly. Yeah, I, you know, I just wanted to provide council with a little snapshot of the service calls that we received during and after the storm. Um, we got approximately five inches of rain in that 24-hour period. And I think the worst came actually Tuesday before the remnants of Ida even got here. There was a stalled cold front over the area. We got a tremendously intense rainfall that caused, I think, probably two-thirds of the calls that you see on this map. Uh, you know, as a general statement, I think we received, you know, 50 plus or minus service calls. Some of the past storms we've received much more. We've received over 100 and some of the historically bad events. So take that for what it's worth. I mean, I, I think that might be a win. Um, the only thing I did want to say, and we, you know, we'll probably be discussing this more during budget time, there were two or three uh, points on this map, service calls that we got that, you know, once we investigated them, that I think there could potentially be some uh, upgrades to public infrastructure that could be justified uh, because of the flooding. So we'll be discussing those, you know, probably during budget time once we gather some more information. But most of these were private, you know, either creeks coming out of their banks, flooding roads, flooding houses. Um, there were very few instances where we could pinpoint something to like an inadequacy of infrastructure. So. And I presume the dam in Giant Oaks held up, huh? The, uh, the dam. The dam? <laughs> yes. Okay. We, we actually, we drew it down a little bit. I don't know whether mm -hmm. that helps or not because it fills up so quick. But. Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm, serious. I'm being serious because, I mean, what they're telling us, I mean, it has to survive what, you know, the new one has to survive what? Three what, times as much. Uh, yeah, three and a half times as much. Yeah. Um, yeah, it did survive. We drew it down again. We started Monday afternoon, so we it was drawn down about nine inches when the storm hit. Then we closed the valve, um, so it was fine. I mean, I, it was checked, and I think Jay told me it had maybe six to nine inches of flow over the spillway. Yeah, I did not get back to look. And I, so. and I think it was probably twice that during Ivan. Ivan was was much more severe, so. If I could be a broken record again about this and your emphasis on the fact that we have issues on private property, is to make sure that when we have developments being constructed that the adjacent properties that exist already are not negatively impacted by either a big development or an individual property because we can't have people, I don't think we should allow people to create problems for their neighbors. And I think that some of that is still happening. And I think we just need to try to be as conscious as possible so that these private property issues don't become our issues. One thing that I would want to point out that it is in uh, Mark's report, you know, over the last few years, um, we have partnered with a number of, of uh, property uh, owners uh, to be able to solve um, uh, stormwater issues on their property um, and um, in the whole of those cases uh, we did not receive calls uh, in this storm uh, at any one of those and That's those great. would have been ones that you would have would have seen normally on, on a map like this. So. Mr. Zomitis did mention that in his report and I know you've been very good about trying to partner when we've authorized that with people when it's and in a variety of ways. I mean, we've done a lot of different things to try yeah. to help. Thank you for the information. I hope that everybody's recovered now. I hope so too. Anything else, Bob? Yes. Um, um, uh, we, at the intersection of um, East McMurray and uh, B. Bout and Thompson Bill Road. Um, as late as this afternoon, we were in touch with Columbia Gas. Um, oh, yeah. and they have been working in the intersection um, on the B. Bout Road side because PennDOT will allow them to do work on that road during the day. PennDOT still is not permitting them to do work on East McMurray Road between uh, B. Bout and Bittersweet Circle. Um, 
and so they would like uh, council's permission to go ahead uh, with doing that that work in the evening i know that um, for one of our neighbors up there uh, uh, mr uh, sanders that this is a concern i spoke to him this afternoon and explained to him the situation i can't say that he's he's happy with with that but he's resigned to the fact that that work would be done uh, in the evening, it's probably a five, five days worth of work. Is there a way they can put off in a hotel or something so they can lose have a decent amount of sleep? I could talk to Columbia to ask and ask him that question, but uh, I, I don't know that. Are they working on Thompson? No, they're, they're going to be working on uh, East McMurray between uh, Bebout and Bittersweet Circle. They've got to get up the bittersweet circle, then stub down yeah. uh, about 30 feet. So that's, that's, that's not good for them not to be able to sleep. That's terrible. What, what are the hours that they're going to do in the evening? Overnight. Oh, overnight? Overnight. Yeah. Starting at midnight? Starting, Starting at 7 o'clock, I believe. And they can't do it during the day because PennDOT won't Pendo, let them right, As of right now, PennDOT won't let them do day work there. They have a request in the PennDOT, but he says he doesn't know when when uh, they're going to hear back from PennDOT. So. Is this line that needs to go up to Bittersweet within the pavement or will it be off to the side? I think it's on the edge. I think it's within, within the yeah, cartway. Yeah. Some of the whole ramps and things of that nature may. So what, right now, so the work is just stopped now? Is that? The work is stopped. They, they have a little bit of work to continue on Bebout. They have some work on Thompsonville to do, but the, the section between East McMurray Road and Bittersweet Circle that won't move forward. You know, and, and, is, and, and trust me, Columbia Gas or the, any of the utilities are inconvenient when they're in your neighborhood. But Columbia Gas, efforts to replace their lines is something that we should be supportive of just from a safety standpoint well, why is it we uh, we never find out about this stuff until yeah. after it already starts and some poor resident calls and says they can't sleep because yeah, well, somebody's jackhammering all night long yeah well in this case you have a new project manager unfamiliar yeah. with our processes we don't have any control over it anyway right Oh, I think you do have control because I think you have an ordinance that doesn't allow them to do this work at night. But, you know, having said that, I, the work needs to be done. And if PennDOT isn't going to move, I think it's in the township's interest to have a gas line replaced. Have, have they reached out to Mr. Sanders at all regarding this? I've, I've been talking. No, to not you. I'm saying the gas company. Well, I don't know whether the gas company has or not. I don't know. I, they understand the issue of the... Of, I mean, how much, I mean, I agree with Gary. How much would it cost to put them up for a, for five nights? Heck, they probably they could probably work faster if they were having to pay to put this guy up somewhere. Oh, I'd rather put up with the noise and leave my house. Yeah. They're going to be in my backyard starting the end of the month. Yeah, no, well, that's my next slide when oh, we get done thanks. with this one. <laughs> well, maybe it'll put you up somewhere, too. We've got a precedent here. I always stay like rich. So five, five days, five nights to get it done, yeah. if they do it at night, and if they don't, how much time during the day? They won't do it during the day. Well, they can't do it during the day, but it's longer if it's during the day. Because they just can't replace it, is what you're saying. So the choice is let them do it at night or it doesn't get replaced. They'll let it do it at night or it's wait the PennDOT changes their mind about allowing them to do the work during the day. Well, and even if PennDOT allows them to do it during the day, it's going to take more than five days to do yes. it during the day. Plus, you'll have upset a lot of people when you have one lane closed there Whew. for two or three weeks while they're doing that. The school students. Yes. Well, we approved. Do you need this. a motion? We yes. approved this for water on Viva. So we need done it for Columbia Gas on on East McBurry Road and right. that sorts of ice. Well, right, but but then but there they they agreed not to jackhammer at night. Which they can't do here because oh, obviously no, they, they can only they work at night. They did ramp hose on these yeah, they they do. Do. I got calls in the night. No, but I remember because when they came with us, we said that we specifically said that they were not to jackhammer like after 10 o'clock or something they like that. Did oh, did they anyway? I don't think there's a choice. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, no, down on East McBurg Road down here? No, trust me. Neighbors complained down on East McBurg Road. No, I'm talking about the I know past Mr. Polk's house. Yeah. 
Well, no, because I remember that one gentleman who lived a couple doors down from the high school when he came in and said his daughter couldn't sleep because they were jackhammering all night long. We specifically asked them to stop, to stop jackhammering. I well, I'll make a motion that we allow Columbia Gas to do evening work uh, to repair their pipeline at the corner of B about East McMurray and Thompsonville Roads. Are you putting a time limit on that? Well, what, what it, they're anticipating five days worth of work, so. Yeah, I, no, I don't have a time limit on it. Sorry. Okay. In favor? Aye. Aye. Reluctantly. Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'll say yes. I'm an aye. Okay, how can you say nay? I, what, 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 when are they going to do the work? I want to see them get in touch with Mr. Sanders and try to work out something that is, is acceptable. Give the guy an opportunity to stay in a hotel, get his kid a decent night's sleep. Jim, I don't know what the hell, why do you care what I hope? No, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I was just, I mean, I just don't understand what, 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 Okay, I understand. Um, anything else? Next. Well, then, I just wanted to inform council, uh, we've got a, a permit request in today for uh, work on a Columbia uh, gas line uh, actually behind uh, all the homes on Saratoga. They're going to be closing down the, um, the, the... Uh, Trail? Well, the Trail parking park. lot here off of Thomas, that's where they're going to stage their equipment. They're going to construct a a road behind oh, all of the oh, homes to get down to this location. And at that location, uh, there is a slide that is endangering their gas line, and they're going to going to repair that slide. So this is a project that's going to last maybe 60 days. Yeah, I know they said they wanted to get it done before. Yeah. They, Feel they free to vote no on November 30th. Yeah. And they want to get they want to get this done because apparently that line is a transmission line um, needed uh, to provide gas to homes. Do you mentioned they're going to use that parking lot? Do they just con commandeer that? And yeah, well, they do because they own it. They own that. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't tell that. To <laughs> they own the vast majority of it. We own a sliver, and quite frankly. We need to be cooperative with them if for sorry, no other reason well, just than they allow us to park there. Just so we understand that, <laughs> that, that area of the slide, the homeowner constructed a, I don't know if you've ever seen it, a serious Retaining yeah. rock. Here. Yeah. What do you call those, Mark? Uh, Gabian baskets. Yeah, Gabian. Oh. And they never asked or got township permission or supplied a engineering Please tell me that's not true. So, oh, well, that is true. It is true. Well, then what? what did we do to So now... Uh, people start construction and don't contact us. You, but then you find it out, and what do we do about it? It was done before we found out. So but how could that... I mean, we can, you can see fine? that from did the road, get, though. No, no, you can't see that from the road. Is it from the trail? Hmm? Yeah, you can see it from the trail. Oh, you can definitely see from it from, from the, the trail. trail. I would agree uh -huh. with that. You can't see it. It looks like the China Wall. Is this up the street from you, The Great Wall of China. Is this up the street from you, Jim? What's that? Yeah, that is up the street from you. Yeah, and so it would be down the trail towards yeah, the on there. And I, I will tell you, there, there, were, a lot there. there were days where dump trucks were bringing rocks in there. And nobody noticed? On a regular basis. I I didn't. Didn't. Well, then why didn't you tell somebody yeah. then? I did. That's, I, I, can't, well, I, say, I can't believe none of the neighbors called and complained about that. So where, where is the slide part of this thing? Right there at, the, at that wall. Oh. Underneath. So they're taking it out, um, which huh. what did they I, I don't know how the much money the homeowner spent we, on that. Wait, do we think that the slide, that, that wall that caused out. the slide? We don't know that. Yeah. We don't know that. Well, I guess I have to down They're not doing any work here, are they? What's it? No. I don't have to because I don't have to cut it. When they put that road in, are they going to take it out when it's done? Yes. They're going to enter agreements yeah. with all the property. I'm told that they're, they're going to restore my yard to what it looks like. 
I think you're going to. Can't say I have a high degree of confidence. Uh, I don't want to be Okay. Anything else? No. Any uh, council members have items for the next? Oh, wait. Time? One other thing to this too is that there's another home that has a fire pit. Yeah. And I believe yeah. a swing set. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. This is a. This right here is a fire pit that sits right on top of the. Um, Top of the we determine if that's on their property or we don't know that yet. We're gonna look into that? Yes. Well, well, it's on top of the right gas there. It's they're taking out the fire pit and I, and and in the conversation I've had with the guy, they're gonna determine whether they're gonna replace it back. Or well, if it's in the right of way, it's probably probably it or have it removed, yeah. No, if it's not well, I think the fire pit's gone. gone. It, it's going to be, a, there will not be a fire pit inside their easement. It runs on gas now. I wonder how, how you feel about having a fire pit over a gas line. Anyway. Yeah, that's what I mean. Unless you yeah. tapped into it, there's like a little flank going on. <laughs> that's, given the size of the line, it'd be a big flank. Yeah, I'm sure it would be. Yeah, I see swear. <laughs> okay, anything else? Oh. Nope. Council members? No. We're here next week, right? Yes, we're here next week, seven o'clock, for a the first budget workshop. I will not be here. I will not be here either. We have a. But, I, but I've requested to uh, be able to attend via yeah. yep. whatever I'm electronic ready. means we have available. Okay. We have a, an executive session. Yes, we do. Legal and personnel. Okay, we are adjourned.